Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby, and welcome back to World of Tanks, and the end of the year is rapidly approaching, and as I always do at this season, it's time to turn up the content on YouTube, and I can't promise I'm going to be releasing YouTube videos every day, considering the crazy amount that I'm streaming at the moment, but I'm going to strive to get you, hopefully, nearly daily videos for the rest of 2022. So, I want to get back to playing live games on YouTube for this period as well, and I thought, why not play through the best of each nation's tanks. So I want to start today off with Sweden, everyone's favorite affordable furniture country, and let's see what is the best that Sweden has to offer. I don't really want to just play premium tanks all day long, and that's probably what this list would end up being. I want to focus on the tech tree tanks, aka the vehicles that all of you can be able to get. And wow, first up, best dressed. The Udes 1516 is packing a 50.68% win ratio. That's pretty darn outrageous considering it is a tier 10 medium tank. This vehicle is very underrated. A lot of people don't take the Udes 1516 seriously and hopefully today I'm going to be able to show you why you should take this tank seriously. Now I've done a masterclass video on this tank and in that video I showed I think it was two of the top 10 games of all time with regards to assistance. And that's because this vehicle is an incredibly proficient scout. It has one of the best camera ratings of any medium tank in the game. And so if you pump that up with things like concealment, brothers in arms, and how I like to with an exhaust and a commander's vision system, when you get on maps like Malinovka or Prokhorovka, it's kind of the equivalent of having an extra light tank on your team. And I don't know about you, I'd rather have an extra light tank on my team in Malinovka or Prokhorovka. However... I don't need to do that here. I don't need to use that vision setup. I'm just going to go for the all-purpose brawling hold down build of turbo with vents and a gun rammer here for the Udes. So I'm spawning in on Fjords. Fjords is all about creating a crossfire on your opponents and you can create the crossfire by having people in the dip here and also players up towards the north. This vehicle with its wonderful up to I think it's 13 degrees of gun depression including the hydro pneumatic suspension on this vehicle is just absolutely perfect for going and getting into the dip and going hull down. The frontal armor on this vehicle on the turret is tremendous and because the gun is all the way at the top of the vehicle because this tank pretty much completely lacks a forehead that allows you to be able to avoid even getting shot while you're still able to have uh, engagements against your opponents or at least getting shot in your hull armor or even shot in say weak points towards the top of the tank. You're still going to be careful when you play this vehicle if they do have tremendously high penetration, high explosive anti-tank rounds, they can manage to shoot to this part of the armor. But apart from that, the Udes 1516 is incredibly solid. Alright, so this game looks like an absolute dream so far. Nobody's come to challenge me inside the dip, so I get to live for the mid part of the game. We've got two leopards going up towards the north, and I expect that this leopard is about to find out that you can't sit there very very soon in this battle if I don't get pushed backwards by my object 907 this leopard is going to figure out that the two leopards up towards the northeast are about to start tagging him very badly yes there's one tag here comes the second tag and now he's going to have to push forwards to get out of line of fire he's actually going to panic and just drive over there so my team is going to continue to smash him and while he's running away I'm going to put another round into his back and now focus on his STB1 and he's found out why this map is just so unbalanced. This, I have no idea why Wargaming even think that this map is even a good idea from this side. It's crazy the kind of balancing that this map has. We've got to be careful here, however, though, because there's a blooming T95 that's right in front of us. However, luckily, our excellent camo looks like it's kept us hidden for uh, long enough to avoid uh, certain destruction there. So if the enemies push up towards the Leopards, they're going to be in a huge amount of pain. Um, what I can do in this position, actually, this is a little risky, but I'm going to do it anyway. You can actually push to this forward position here. We've got the bushes, and I should be able to have cleaner shots up against my opponents over here. And also, if you kind of like wedge your vehicle slightly up here, you've got to kind of like really go into this rock. It allows you to vault the hull up, but maybe this thing's too low profile to do that. I'd probably have to like go like this to be able to do that. And then that can allow you to get even a little bit more height with your vision. It looks like we might have spotted that SDB-1 because of that. So I've got to be careful in this scenario. I really don't have the hull armor to go after the T-95, but it looks like this SDB-1 has just decided that he has to push. And you know what? That's It's it's a fair play. It's a fair play. He kind of had to push in that. So I guess he didn't have to push. But in that kind of a situation, 
It's like, what can you do? Do you just sit there and wait for the game to be a loss? Holy moly, that T95 has really good camera rating. Um, doesn't look like it did them too well. And it looks like I got hit by an STRV1030 as well. Is this 257 going to push up now? He just probably doesn't realize he's going to get nailed in the back. And unfortunately for me, it looks like this Object 907 and friends are actually in a better position for vision there. I'm going to push forwards, hopefully put a round into the top of the WTR Panzer IV, but I can't actually find the top of his tank. I'm not the one spotting him either, and I found an STRV. Got to watch out for that, because now I'm lit up. But I should be able to clunk him behind. Get a tracking shot in. Finish him off. And we venture forwards. I don't have intuition, otherwise I would switch out for an HE round here for the WTR Panzer IV. Nice shot there, mate. You got me good. I should easily reload before this player, though, unless the T-54 gets him. Don't really want to ram him. I'm quite light in a UDES. And... Hello, Artie. Thank you very much for that. But yeah, I didn't want to waste the extra 100 hit points, but it ended up with me taking a shot from the arty there. This game's actually still kind of close. And look at that, just like that, up to nearly 5,000 combined in the first three and a half minutes of this battle. It's pretty darn cool. All right, so I'm going to flank around up towards the north and see if I can get some shots over. I'm actually going to preload a heat round because I'm a little bit filthy and I'd rather have the extra penetration against a Panzer VII. It's definitely one of the downsides of the Swedish tanks is they get really bad penetration on their premium rounds. So look at that. Oh, I was about to say, look at that. I didn't even get spotted, but I actually did. Don't want to really fall in and drown right now. But I, this is where I could just sit hull down all day long. And I know about his weak point on the side. Unfortunately, I hit just towards the right. I'm going to continue to flank around here. Um, and in fact, I think I'm being far too safe in this situation. I think I should have probably been a little bit more aggressive against this Panzer VII. Looks like he wants to try and blind fire that bush. There's actually a CS-63 taking chunks out of me. Okay, well now I have to be careful, right? Do you think I'm still spotted with this bush? Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out in a second. We seem to be okay. So we now know where the CS-63 is. So let's just, just try and take a look to see if this AMX makes a mistake, which they do. We'll finish them off and we'll go back to being hidden. Don't want to take a shot from the CS-63. Hopefully the Panzer VII starts to get taken out by my team. And you know what? I'm going to go for another shot right on the side that I don't find. I'll go for a lower plate, see if I get lucky. And I do. Delicious, boys and girls. We're up to 5,600, nearly 5,700 combined. And hopefully with one shot onto a CS-63, who's probably skulking around these bushes, we will be in the money. In the money. Come on. One more shot. I want to get I want to get 6K. Give me 6K combined. Is that too much to ask? Hey. Clearly not too much to ask. Actually goes up to 6,200 combined. Pretty nice round of the world of tanks. And of course, we've got to pose for a, a quack baby thumbnail at the end of the game as well, right? So, pretty good start to this season's live gameplay. Of course, all of my battles are going to go just that well. Um, it's always fun to play live for YouTube because I can't cherry pick my best games. Um, this one I was actually really happy with. Uh, yeah, 3,800 damage, 2,300 assistance. It's just the all-purpose round. I didn't get the quite the amount of experience as the Tier 9s, but they were doing nearly as much as me um, in their Tier 9s compared to Tier 10s. So, UDES 1516. I love this tank. Go check out my Masterclass video on this vehicle if you want to know everything there is to know about it. Okay, so we played the best Swedish medium. Why don't we play the best Swedish heavy? And that is actually going to be the Emil 2. But you know what? I just featured the Emil 2 on my YouTube channel just on Tuesday. So why don't we mix it up a little bit and play the Kranvang instead? Now, both vehicles are going to have the same kind of gameplay, but I presume that the uh, I, I presume that what you learn from my Kranvang, you'll be able to inter interlace with your Emil 2. The Kranvang is just taking the Emil 2 and turning it up a notch. Uh, I guess the reason why the Emil 2 would have a better win ratio is because it's more kind of more powerful tier for tier. Has the same gameplay, but worse reload. It has the um, probably worse gun handling, probably the worst mobility as well. Although now with the Kranvang being nerfed, it's kind of in a pretty awkward situation as well. All right, cool. So where am I going to take this tank? Um, I'm going to take durability instead of turbo on this map. It's going to make my reverse speed pretty painful. And my top speed won't be quite so good to get into the town. But I think it'll just make me so much more confident when it comes down to uh, side scraping. And that's where your Swedes can be a little bit awkward. So the Kranvang, is it is it a good tank still? I think it's still pretty good. Um, 
it's not your all-purpose OP vehicle, as I talked about in my video just from Tuesday this week, but it's um, it's still solid. It's still very solid. I mean, how can you go wrong when you can deliver three 440 alpha damage shells within five and a half seconds of the first shot? This tank is all about going hull down, so what I might be able to do is kind of skulk around the back here and hope that my opponents push, but it is assault. And considering it's assault, I do feel like I have to be the one to take the fight to my opponents, and I'm not sure if sitting back and hoping that they're going to attack is really going to be the winning play. Talk about willing to attack. What is this T-49 doing? Got to be careful around this corner, but I think this T-49 will fall back, and hopefully he will fall back into my line of fire. There's the IS-7. Is he going to push round? He's not. He's just going to chill there. Oh, it's so tempting to go after his butt, but I will probably suffer for it, and it means that I actually missed my first shot on the T-49. I hit my second shot, though, and that is one crippled American light tank at the start of the battle. Happy I didn't go around that corner there. That 60 TP would have definitely have smashed me. Shimo wasn't fully aimed at the T-49, otherwise they would be out of this battle. So hopefully I can just get some of this big meat behind me into the fight, because that's what you need. You need to have the meat going in, the meat tanks for you, and then you do the damage. You're an autoloader after all, right? We just lost our Leopard prototype to a WTL Panzer IV up on the hill. And there's a 60p that seems to want to come after me. Um, maybe what I can do is actually kind of go hold down against the IS-7 over here. Or even, oh, no, that was a misplay by me. Look at that. I just got shot by a Char Future 4. He's actually just sitting there, though? Okay. I mean, you got your first shot in, mate. But you realize I've got teeth, too, in a Grand Bang. All right. You know what, I don't think there's too much pressure on us right now. I might just go for a full reload. I really don't think this Char's going to come around the corner. I'm just going to go for a full reload. And now that I got rid of the Char Future 4, what I really want to do is kind of end up using this position to go hold down against these players. I kind of need heat rounds to deal with the IS-7's lower plate reliably. But as long as he's not angling, I can still go through the, uh, the lower plate quite cleanly. All right, I'm going to take my chance that these guys aren't going to vomit around the corner after me. And I'm going to... Oh, here he is. He's actually back again. Oh, Mr. Char, you are annoying. He knows exactly what he's doing, though. He's stopping me from being able to get the crossfire against the IS-7, which is why it's really important to try and skulk in along there. Talk about Char Future 4s. Uh, there seems to be another Char Future 4. My Jagdpanzer just completely ignored it. Oh, well, laddie. Um, let's turn my turret quickly and try and skulk into position so we don't get shot by that Char Future 4. And then maybe we can still even be able to get this Char Future 4 around the corner. Oh, why did you... You left the, left the high ground, mate. All right, this is starting to get pretty ugly now. With that Char Future 4 above us, uh, that's going to be incredibly ugly, actually. Hopefully I can get this IS-7 if he comes back. He should reverse, right? I don't want to sit here, otherwise that Char Future 4 is going to start shooting me. As one shot into an E-75... Two shots into an E75. I'm actually going to reload heat here because I think I'll need the extra penetration soon. And I'm going to drive in here without getting shot by that char. I think it'll work out well for me. I'm hoping that the RU251 gets a little bit more vision on the char. I can't quite get him, but I'm going to tell I'm going to tell this RU251 they're going to help him. I've already told him I'm going to help him. Maybe the char reverses, maybe the char doesn't. You know what, I feel like i got to make a push play with these big boys. I feel like we've got to make a push play with these big boys. Let's go. Got to watch out with the Cobra on our side. But this should be pretty delicious. Oh, Mr. Type. There's one. There's two. Easy was one, two, three. And there's a 60 TP behind me. It's still a dangerous heavy. Sure, Wargaming have made it more awkward with the gun handling. They've nerfed it with the accuracy, but it's still darn good on an ridge line, and it can still absolutely shred faces in close quarters combat. That's all you really need sometimes, huh? Oh, 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 Mr. Yeguru. Don't want to get in your way. There's a good chappy chap. What's this Char Future 4 doing? Running. He realized it a little too late, didn't he? don't really want to do this kind of a trade. Oh my lord, that guy just absolutely ripped us apart. I guess he'll think that I'm reloading if I drive like this. Is he going to try and side scrape me? Oh, he just got tagged. He wouldn't have liked that. I think he'll. I think he's in a panic. Talk about panic. I don't want to drive out in front of an E3 and a 60 DP at the same time. Can I get that shot? I'm just going to go for one and reload. Again, that's one of the massive downsides to this vehicle is how poor the penetration on its premium rounds are. It's very poor. 300 is just really not tier 10 penetration. 
This game is so close right now. They've got the high ground. I guess I should slink in and try and assassinate these 60 TP, but I don't want to get caught by a cobra. If I get caught by a cobra, I'm not going to be a happy chappy. Oh, there's a WT out Panzer IV out there. That's even worse. Is this guy going to try and come around the corner for me? Dude, that puts me so vulnerable now to a cobra. I got to watch out for that. I got to respect that WT. Oh, did I just reload at the worst possible time? I did. Okay, he's down to a position where I can kill him now. Hmm, I'm not sure if I've been aggressive enough here, boys and girls, honestly. I think he's running. I think he's reloading. I know there could be a char in the corner, but I feel like I've got to risk it right now. Oh, he's clearly not reloading, but he didn't pen me. He didn't pen me again. And easy as one, two, three. We might be back in this game. We might be back in this game. Oh, yeah. Nice. E4 gets a kill on the A phase one. Does that char future four spot me? Oh, he did. Now I could get shot in the bootocks. <gasps> he got me. But I got him. No! Oh, I totally goofed. I totally goofed. No excuses. It's because I had my heat rounds loaded and I couldn't go in through his track. Oh, no, 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 no. I goofed, I goofed, I goofed. Could be game losing. Could seriously be game losing. There's a lot of pressure up on us right now. Is that WT trying to slinky in behind us? I can't risk it. I just got to go. Oh, I keep missing. Dude, 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 just go forwards or backwards. One of the two. Oh, I low rolled. Oh, I didn't low roll that, though. One health. Did I really have to leave him on one health for that kind of stress? Oh, God. Did I really have to do 6,000 damage in this game? I did make a big misplay against that, uh... That's 60 TP, though. Such a close game. Do I have to do? Try and go hold down over here? Is that child trying to sneaky up on me? He's not trying. He is sneaking up on me. Oh, it's like a one versus five, boys and girls. No, one versus five. I have got a friend. What's that? No! Good kill. Good kill. All right. Well, 6,600 combined here. It's not bad for a Grand Vong with four kills. I definitely made a misplay against the 60 TP. Wish I had intuition on this vehicle. I don't have intuition on this vehicle, however. I think that's still a, a pretty good showcase of what the Grand Vang is still able to do. Didn't block any damage, though. Zero damage blocked. And that's because I couldn't get on a ridge line right where this vehicle is meant to be. Nevertheless, with calm, considered plays, you can still do very well in a vehicle like this. And while its gun handling has definitely been nerfed, it still didn't stop us from being able to clamp through that game and to be able to get a high caliber. GG, well played to the enemy team. Looks like this 121B did a good job uh, with a nearly, nearly took the high caliber away from me. And this E3, just a big juggernaut who's, uh, who was actually called Big Daddy, but unfortunately that was an anonymized name. And also well played to the WTL Panzer IV for securing the flank and um, handling that battle out. Anyway, still a pretty good game for the Kranvong. I think this tank is still great in World of Tanks. Alrighty then, so what is the best tank destroyer? <gasps> wow, it's actually the tier 10. Have you noticed that? That Swedish tanks seem to be doing incredibly well at tier 10. And you know what? You don't have to ask me twice to play the STR V103B. I love this tank. This is, I think, the third highest damage per minute in World of Tanks. And it's also combined with the most accurate uh, tank in World of Tanks, which it is, along with the UDES. Although... Interestingly enough, as I've been, as I experienced earlier, I think this, uh, this, well, like, sorry, late towards last month, the Gorilla 15, I feel eventually if you set this tank and that tank up correctly, becomes the more accurate vehicle. Because I don't think the Gorilla 15 wants to sacrifice accuracy because it puts so much into that individual shot. Whereas personally for me, uh, for the penultimate field mod on the STR V103B, I actually end up improving the vehicle's rate of fire at the sacrifice of its accuracy. 
All right then, so what are we going to do on this map, boys and girls? I'm going to push east. That's what I'm going to do. There's two ways to play this map, right, as a TD. One, you can sit here. Two, you can sit here. And the third way is that we can be aggressive and we can try and play like a medium tank and take the fight to the enemy team. So, uh, let's push push the zero line, line friends. Let's push the zero line, friends. That's what I'm going to try and do. All right, so STRV-103B, hydrogen pneumatic suspension, most accurate tank in the game, although it gets less accurate than the Gorilla, I believe, after you set it up perfectly. Uh, it's great against all guns that are 120 millimeter caliber and lower, but be careful because heat rounds can still go through your lower plate, so you've got to watch out for that. And you do have a bit of a weak point on top as well that you've got to be concerned about. All right, so my enemies have got a bat chat, but the bat chat's been spotted in like a heavy tank position. They've got a CS-63 as well. Um, I hope this G-Saw realizes that we should push here and not stop here. We should totally not sit here. This is one of the worst positions we could ever sit, honestly. I'm going to have to just overtake them like this then. Try and go into the dip. Hope that I'm not going to get rammed or flanked by a... You know, with all due respect, be quiet. Don't tell me what to do. I'm going to outscout you this game. Alrighty then. So, let's get forwards. Hopefully I'm going to outscout them. He says that. Remember, this thing's got incredibly good camo as well. A little bit nervous about the way that this has gone so far. We've got a pattern up in the bushes. Yeah, there's a pattern. I haven't managed to see him yet. I think the enemy have played this map real bad. All right, let's drop back so that we can't get spotted through that bush. And drop back so we can't get spotted through that bush. And then we'll retrack him. Oh, 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 oh. No one's going to shoot him? Wow, I actually got spotted there. Disaster. I am absolutely baffled that my team are just not shooting a T-30. The bro is literally just sitting out in the open. Okay, well, my bad, I guess. What, Progetto 65? Unfortunately, our G-Saw got spotted there. Oh, look at that accuracy. Look at that gun handling. Look at that rate of fire. And to have the armor as well. And do you notice I have a Bond Turbo, I believe, on this tank? Look how fast this tank is with a Bond Turbo. It's actually ridiculous. No doubt. It is actually crazy how silly how fast this thing ends up getting. Whoa, where's the CS-63? Ah, uh, we found him. There she blows, Cam. Whoa, I got 900 assistance. It's so cheeky to fire right now. I don't think I should do that. Should I get this 1390, though? Oh, it's so cheeky to do this. I'm such a cheeky baby. Oh, don't do this, boys and girls. Whoa, how did I not get spotted? That's incredible. All right, well, I feel like I'm outscouting this G-Saw, at least in my humble opinion. Do you know what's really cool about this vehicle? Is I can go hold down against the CS-63 and the Progetto, and there's nothing they can do about it. Oh, no. No. Nice tracking shot. Keep the gun on the danger. Look at that accuracy. Look at that DPM. What a... Look at that. Right into his tracks. Beautiful. Couldn't quite find the second shot. Progetto wants to come back around the corner again. Bounce off the turret. Got spotted. Make sure we kill the CS first. Then turn our gun back towards the autoloader who's firing heat. So that means that we, he'll go through my lower plate every time tell the uh, T-62A that I'll help them out. Yeah! We got this T-62A. I believe in you, my friend. We push forwards to glorious victory. Whoa! Can we do in time? Oh, I couldn't get into the siege mode in time. It took me too long. If you see why I fired, I literally just fired at the blooming spoil heap there like a complete idiot. Oh, no. Oh! That was nearly very worrying. Um, so here's a little bit of a tip. You can actually go around the outside here. And then that allows you to use the bushes to not get spotted from the inside. And then you can set up here. And we'll be able to find the Progetto if he's in the bush. Yeah. I will help. I will help. I'm, I'm helpings. I'm helpings? Please don't make me be the one who pushes, guys. I'll, I'm, I'm helpings. Hopefully I'm helpings. Where's this sneaky Progetto? Where is he? Aha! Gotta shoot him in the turret. Surely he dies before 
No? My word. Surely he dies now. Why aren't they killing him? How could it- I was leaving the siege mode because I just presumed that they would know how to shoot a Progetto. Why did I have to shoot that guy three times? Okay, well, yeah. Um, this vehicle's- its changing time isn't too bad, as you can see. It's only two seconds, so going into the siege mode, leaving the siege mode, it's not really so much of a big deal. Alright, so what's likely to be camping? A standard B- Oh! Oh, baby. Oh, oh, there's a lot of tanks. Oh, there's a lot of tanks. Oh, give me all these tanks. This is the Swedish dream. Oh, the perfect distance for a Swede where they can't see you and you can see them. And then you've just got all the accuracy, all the DPM. Oh, it's beautiful. I love these tanks, honestly. I'm so happy I did a, uh, a Swedish, a Swedish live session. It's a bit funny how it's just ended up being me playing tier 10s, but you know what? I... I like I like my tier tens occasionally at least, but I love all of my other tiers as well. All right, let's get in, try and find these these artillery and try and find some spotting. Come on, them, come on, come on, boys. There's one. Shoot the tier ten in this situation. I probably should have secured the kill, honestly. Okay, good. Somebody did secure the kill. There's another kill for Quacky Babs, and another kill for Quacky Babs. Hopefully, oh yeah. Oh my gosh, these games. Yeah, I'd just like to say, these are what all of my games are usually like. If you swing by uh, twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby, you'll probably see me having like three games in a row like this just constantly all the time. Uh, yeah, no, it's usually me uh, getting frustrated at, at teams and getting frustrated at matchups and situations that we get in. But not this time. Oh my lord. Look at that. Another hero medal for us. Top gun, 4,800 damage and 2,800 assistance. G saw, to be fair to him, he did do 3,200 spotting. And most STRVs probably wouldn't know how to spot that position as effectively as I did. And so that looks like uh, 7,500 combined once again. Not a bad result. You know what? I, c I can keep these combines going, right? I can keep 7,000 combined going and nearly four kills a game at tier 10. Oh, yeah, no problem. Okay. Now, one thing that's interesting about Sweden is it doesn't really have many other tank types. Um, and I really don't want to go play like tier 1, 2, or 3. Nobody really cares about that. So I'll tell you what. I'll play Sweden's best premium tank. Sweden's best premium tank is actually the Emil 1951. So the Emil 1951, a tier 8 Swedish premium that was originally a reward for playing frontline. However, then I believe Wargaming have put it in loot boxes since, and I think they might have even sold it since. Or maybe it was just only an exclusive inside the loot boxes. What do I think about the Emil 1? Uh, or the Emil 1951, I should say. It's alright. This one needs a turbo, whereas the tier 8 can actually get away with... Um, can get away with... What's it called? The ground resistance improvement. Grouses. Grouses instead. But yeah, this one definitely needs a turbo. I like to pair it with vents and vert stabs. And then I have a coated optics set up as well for when I want to end up on some spotty maps. So, hi friends. Good luck. Have fun. Uh, let's, let's win the flanks together. All right. So, I haven't actually fired that many gold rounds. But I tell you what, I'm going to preload gold on this map. Do you know why? Because I'm going to, I reckon I'm going to have to duel the AE phase ones and the T95, or even the Tiger II to be able to win this. So I'm playing on Steps Assault, and I actually love Steps Assault. Steps Assault is one of my favorite maps to play. Uh, I'm probably one of the only ones, but I actually really like the Assault game mode. If I could, I would actually like to just play Assault all day. Um, I, I mix it up a little bit occasionally, but if I had an option to only select Assault battles, I would. I like the idea that one team attacks and one team defends. Um, it's, it's always nice, and you get that on the random queue uh, in the regular battles or even on encounter where it's kind of like back and forth attacking. I, I do like that, but I also like uh, the way the assault turns the map around on its side, and it makes it play out completely differently, which I think is quite an attractive, uh, attractive way to add variety to the game, which is one of the reasons why I always enjoy playing assault. Sure, the defending team does have an advantage, but in theory, unless the matchmaker is messing up, you should be defending and attacking half the time anyway. Alrighty then, boys and girls. So, I am playing in the Emil. And hopefully, I'm going to show you all why this tank and 12 degrees of gun depression can be phenomenal. Alright, we've managed to make our way into the corner. Let's get to farming, right? Oh, no. Let's get to farming. 
Oh, that really wasn't the ambush farm that I needed. I'm not going to lie. I need to somehow be able to uh, find a better angle for the 12 degrees. Maybe this will be okay, position for 12 degrees over here. Ah, even 12 degrees isn't enough in this position. Maybe along over here. Sometimes I use the position that the 114 is in to hide my lower plate, but the thing is, is this thing's turret armor in this kind of a matchup isn't even really that good, and the A phase 1 will be able to go right through it with heat rounds, so I've got to be careful with that. Really kind of worried that my team are just chilling so much on the other flank, but, um, oh well, what are you going to do about it? So yeah, as I was saying, if the A phase 1 fires heat, he'll be able to go through me pretty much every single time, which will be very painful. You can't really lose too many lots of 400 hit points. Okay. Hello. Oh, that was a bad shot. Yeah, this thing's gun handling is definitely not the uh, the dream. Not the World of Tanks dream. I think I need to be over here as well. But we definitely need to have a crossfire. Can I use this position? Just to be able to try and get the crossfire, buddy. I guess the 114 wants to be over here too, which is absolutely valid. He lost a big chunk of hit points there against the Tiger 2, and it doesn't look like he's confident enough to be able to go up after him. The Tiger 2 actually just lost a good amount of HP for that, though. There's one. There's two. A phase one gets a shot. So as long as I don't get tracked again, I should be okay. Ah, oh, missed that one. Darn, those two A phase ones. Told you they're going to be a pain. I honestly thought that 12 degrees of gun depression would perform better here than it actually is. Quite surprised, I actually bounced, I, I got pent by the AP round there and got, and bounced the heat round. Do you know what, I think we're actually outnumbered on this flank, which means that hopefully our team will have the advantage on the other flank. And if our team has the advantage on the other flank, maybe I can just relax here. As long as, as long as this 114 doesn't keep throwing hit points and then they realize that they can push, we should be okay. Gosh, look how tiny I am compared to that Type 4 Heavy, it just seems, seems quite silly to be honest. When you, uh, to, be, uh, to be fair, though, every single tank in the game looks silly compared to a, a Type 4 Heavy, I think. Um, maybe not a mouse. Okay, come on, boys. Somebody's got to make some mistakes. Left, right, and center. Oh, there was so nearly a shot. That's a pain. Oh, I'm just whiffing gold shells like a complete noob right now. Oh, do I go for a reload or do I hold to try and find another shell? It's always funny when you play your tier 8 premiums and you end up firing more gold than you than you did on all of your tier 10 gameplay. Q, Q, Q. Q, Q, Q. Well, it looks like my team's going to win the other flank. Well, I was hoping this game would go a little bit better, but it didn't. Oh, it didn't. Maybe I can actually go over here and isolate this 252U. I think he's, I think he's thinking he's a little too safe right now. If I go over this part, and then get a crossfire where the others can't shoot me, maybe this will work. A phase one's pushing up now. Maybe I can get him over here. Oh, they all turn so fast. Nice. Nice. You want some? I'll give it to you. You want some more? I'll give it to you. Easy peasy, and that's what the Emil does. One shot from the 430U, and then three from me. And now he's down to a single hit point. The A phase one just got smashed. Should I try and ram him? This is so silly. This is so silly. Don't do this. I took 325 for that! Oh, God. Not good trades, but at least it allows me to save one of the extra shells. Hopefully the A for the A phase one. Maybe I rammed him a little bit too hard there. Yeah, I don't think Swedish tanks really have the, the weight. Oh, this is bad. Doesn't feel like it. Oh, am I not penning any? Oh, I, did I get him? Oh, I did get him. I just low rolled. Ah, it's not a bad game for the Emil, actually. The Emil, 1951. Not too shabby, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. I'll take 2,800 damage and 897 assistance. That's actually pretty good for a, a, a tier 8. And hopefully we'll be able to make some profit, even though we did whiff all of those gold shells. It's definitely one of the downsides to this tank, is because you have to load an entire magazine, you do sometimes feel that you want to fire gold a little bit more. Nevertheless, we finish second on damage, second on experience. I'm going to boost that one up, and we make 32,000 credits profit, with 10,000 going into our credit reserve. So, not too shabby. Anyway, 
Ladies and gents, boys and girls, that was a great way to start off possibly daily Quickie Baby content for the remainder of the year and to bring back the live series to YouTube. If you like this format, this longer format, please let me know in the comments and make sure you also give all of these longer format videos a thumbs up. But if you hate these kind of videos and you don't want to see any more of them, also let me know in the comments and give the video a thumbs down. Anyway, that was a savage session showing you the best that Sweden has to offer. Really hope you loved this video. If you did, stay tuned to the channel as I will be doing more for all of the other nations in the game. So yeah, really look forward to just pumping out some more content in November and December. And I hope you're all going to enjoy it. So make sure you subscribe. I never say that, but subscribe if you want to catch the daily videos as they are released. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.